Today, we're gonna have another heartbreaking video because the recent episode Apology Tour was nothing but a heartbreaking episode. Yesterday, we dived deep into Blitz and why he can't stand being loved, why he becomes essentially aggressive when someone tries to show love for him. But today, we're gonna explore the opposite end of the spectrum and talk about how Stolas wasn't just broken by his life in hell, but how he became what we might call starved because of it. My name is Deep Cut, subscribe if these videos have been depressing lately, and let's dive into it. Now, Stola started off as an almost distant character in Hell of a Boss, practically a side character in Season 1, a sort of green ranger who appeared once in a while to be the cool bonus to our existing team of IMP. Over time, however, he has become kind of the star of the show, the main plot when it comes to the actual protagonist Blitz, with his feelings shaping the entire direction of the story, and Blitz essentially just reacting to what Stolas wants or needs in the moment. In our previous video, we explored the history of Blitz, particularly with his father, and how that made him someone who couldn't handle being loved. His father taught Blitz that his love was only good if he himself was useful. The love itself could not be useful, it had to be his actions that bring wealth to the family that make him useful. This wasn't just about Blitz working in Cash Buxo's family circus, but also doing dangerous things like robbing the Goetia, something Blitz didn't want to do but that he felt he had to in order to show his love for his mother. This made Blitz uncomfortable with just being loved, and when Stola shows him that love by giving him the Osmodian Crystal, Blitz has to rationalize that it's a roleplay, that it's just more work, or even that he needs to convince Stolas to let him keep it as an arrangement, because that's ultimately what makes Blitz feel safe. Blitz wants to feel like he has no choice, because it makes him feel safe the way he did as a child. Not that he had a safe childhood, but when convinced by a twisted father that robbing people is how you show love, being of use to someone is how you feel safe. It's how you feel like your father and really your family aren't about to abandon you in favor of your best friend like Cash Buxo seemed to do with Fizzerali. It's a twisted psychology given to a character who is at the very bottom of Hell's totem pole, with imps being said very early on in the show's development to be the absolute lowest of the low in Hell, perhaps only outranking the Hellhounds who are pretty low in the system as well. Now, Stolas in the pilot was introduced as more of an antagonist, someone to keep the cast on their toes as they go about their missions and adventures, with Blitz doing his best to avoid Stolas. Since the pilot, Stolas' character has changed quite a bit, and from what I understand, he was reimagined from a more overt villain to the legitimate love interest we see today. With that in mind, Stolas went from being an oppressive character to a character who himself was being oppressed. While people in power generally are the ones using it to control others, people in power can also be victims, not just of people in power around or above them, but also the general society that they exist in. Hell is supposed to be the worst place in existence, but of course, it's just a fun metaphor in the show for what we experience here in our lives on Earth. While there are lots of people with power who are legitimately beyond redemption, the character of Stolas explores how people who ultimately mean well can still end up in these powerful positions in one way or another, and can also be victims of it. And through that, we get to see how even in elite circles, people can still be shaped by toxic aspects of their culture that dehumanize them. One of the most interesting things we explore through Stolas is the idea of what a certain kind of isolation does to a person. Stolas didn't grow up going to school with other students, he rarely saw his father, his mother is completely unknown, and a lot of his early imprinting seems to come from his imp butler, who acted as a father figure to him, and his stuffed toy imp, which made him fixate on the idea of having a real imp as a best friend. This set up Stolas' basic desires, but the intensity that he suffers over them stems from the actual isolation he's felt throughout his entire life. Stolas is someone who is essentially touch-starved, or really just starved in general. He appears to have had very little physical closeness as a child, and most of it would be rather formal, his father patting him on the head to placate him, or the butler simply interacting with him as necessary. It wasn't even that he wasn't hugged enough, but that every physical interaction that he did had was also a source of stress. It was him being placated or handled like a product. Following this, he would marry Stella and even have to impregnate her, and he's made it clear that being with Stella is deeply uncomfortable to him. 
Sharing a room and a bed with her for so long wouldn't have helped Stolas, but rather, it would intensify the need he had for what he thinks of as authentic companionship. The sad thing is, we do this to ourselves so often that everyone in society can be said to suffer from this sort of starvation of affection or basic interaction, especially after the recent pandemic. While many of us receive some affection from our parents in childhood, once you become a teenager, our culture tends to push you into being only allowed to have certain closeness with a romantic partner, and even then, we put limits on that until someone reaches adulthood. At the same time, the parents tend to become more distant from the teenager, and likewise, it's probably in the evolutionary nature of teenagers to start seeking comfort outside of the family at this point. Now, these rules and standards are part of what keeps our society healthy, but it's led to a culture where entire generations are starved for basic kinds of affection and comfort during some of the most important developmental years. We have this idea of teenagers being depressed and moody and anxious for no reason when their parents are treating them less like a loved one and more like a psychological test subject who needs to be pushed to be as productive as possible while having as few of their basic needs met as possible for years and years. Years. And when it comes to Stolas, he didn't have the opportunity to chase all the things he was missing as soon as he turned to an adult. What makes Stolas so interesting, as an opposite to Blitz, is that they seem to have had kind of opposite experiences once they reached adulthood. Blitz is someone who can get laid and who gets it anywhere he can, or at least gets the rush of knowing he is wanted in that way before throwing away the many Dennises that Blitz uses for his validation. Stolas didn't have all of that, and in fact, people seem to have gone out out of their way to avoid flirting with him or to be close with him. Stolas is a Goetia. He was set to be married at an impossibly young age, and as soon as he was an adult, that would happen. He was raised from this palace, as we've said, so he didn't have all these opportunities for relationships that you'd find at school or a workplace, let alone finding anyone who would be forward enough just to make a move on him. He didn't just miss out on healthy sexual relationships, he missed out on thinking he could even be loved or desired in any way at all. He was born to be a useful tool to his father, and his life managed to actually reflect that, convincing him that that's all he was. Growing up, the idea of even a best friend became something that Stolas had let go of. He didn't use his power and influence to make any buddies as an adult, and instead seemed to give up and accept his fate as just a cog in the Goetia machine. At the Goetia party, you can see him standing alone, guzzling down alcohol to try and survive the fact that even within the Goetia, everyone else seems to find love, friendship, or real family bonds besides him. At this point, Stolas would have felt like he was just incapable of being loved, that no matter how evil he might feel that everyone else around him is, that he somehow, even if not evil, is just wrong in some way. The return of Blitz, I'd say, was the return of the idea that Stolas was worth anything at all. He had spent so long thinking about Blitz that he had romanticized him, but just the idea that Blitz was perhaps thinking about him too is what broke Stolas' walls down and suddenly made him believe that he deserved to be liked and wanted. Blitz had ultimately come for the grimoire, but it's absolutely heartbreaking to think that Stolas got so excited over the idea that someone was just thinking about him. Maybe not loving Stolas, maybe not passionately fantasizing about him, but someone who had simply remembered who he was and, for a moment, gave Stolas the impression that he was worth seeing again. And at the end of the day, that probably best explains why Stolas can't handle it when Blitz doesn't see the affection that Stolas has for him. Blitz has his own massive issues that he needs to work through too, but if Stolas seemed like he gave up too fast in Full Moon, it's only because he had been waiting to get some confirmation that Blitz actually cared about him for 25 years now. Stolas had gotten his hopes up when Blitz first returned, but when Blitz made it clear he just wanted the grimoire, Stolas thought he could still convince Blitz that he was a worthy person by just giving Blitz what he wanted and staying in his life. Yes, there was the sexual aspect of their relationship, which Stolas undoubtedly enjoyed more than Blitz, but after Blitz had seemingly been more sexual with Stolas first, this was what Stolas was hoping would lead to Blitz just appreciating him. He waited his entire life just to have someone who wanted to be around him, and when Stolas put it out there that this is all he needs to hear, that he didn't need this arrangement to force them together or a deal or any quid pro quo, Blitz couldn't handle that. Blitz had to convince himself that Stolas just wanted some sort of extra roleplay, and that was what shattered the idea Stolas had in his head of being likable again. 
He had done all of this with Blitz for over a year now, ruining his entire family just for Blitz to not be able to see anything that Stolas did as affectionate. After thinking that Blitz had perhaps missed Stolas in the years that they were apart, Stolas' arrangement with Blitz just led to Blitz being dismissive, essentially ignoring Stolas when they're around each other and being as passive as possible in order to not have to engage, perhaps acting in a way that was making Stolas feel really uncomfortable despite how happy he tried to act around Blitz. As when Stella wasn't yelling at Stolas or wasn't trying to hurt him, I feel like this was the best that she could do, just putting on this very bored face that we see Blitz wear wearing when he's around Stolas, and just trying to act like Stolas isn't really there. Is it any surprise that after another year of someone treating Stolas like this, he couldn't handle it when all Blitz saw was an elite oppressive sociopath trying to manipulate Blitz instead of a man starved of love who just wanted to know that he too was worth remembering? And all of this is why these last few episodes have been such genius television. Both of these characters have so many real layers to their trauma that made them simply reach a catastrophic breaking point at the same time, both succumbing to the pressure of their own psychology and not being able to just be strong for the other person long enough for them to both eventually feel safe. It shows how whether you are poor or rich, you are still very much shaped by what is kept away from you and what you are starved from, and what you need to finally feel whole again. But what do you guys think? And leave your less depressing video suggestions in the comments down below. It's getting a little sad writing some of these. See you guys next time.